Hi, I'm Jiang Yushan, a PhD student from University of Illinois. Feel free to call me YS. Today, I'm very honored to present our paper, More Than Just Informed, The Importance of Consent Facets in Smart Homes. The work was done in collaboration with my advisor, Camille Kopp, and collaborators Omar and Professor Adam Bates. By the end of this talk, I hope you will become more aware of how multifaceted consent can be and how much more we can gain if we adopt multifaceted consent model. I will start with some backgrounds on the landscape of consent, then I will describe what our work finds about consent facets and what this implies for future smart home stakeholders. I'm sure that the term consent is not new to you. We think about it in other contexts in our lives, such as online cookie banner or medical procedure. Online consent often looks like this comic. You probably agree or consented to many terms of services or privacy policy, even though you probably barely actually read them. But at least you had a chance to be informed about what you're consenting to. Intuitively, you can probably agree that even though that is a well-established norm, it is not exactly ideal. What if you're forced to consent because you have no alternative options? What if you did not understand what exactly you were consenting to? What if you change your mind? What if it is too hard to revert your decisions? We argue and build on the idea that consent needs to be more than just informed. These are six facets that we study in our paper. Freely given, revertible, informed, enthusiastic, specific, and unburdensome. It's great that the laws we use to inform our work already position consent as something that is multifaceted. For example, California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA for one, said that consent means any freely given, specific, informed, and unambiguous indication of consumers' wishes. But these laws were created to ensure that consumers have adequate protections against big companies and data brokers. They were not created with a home environment in mind, so it can be hard to apply to smart home environments. Besides meeting the requirements, communicating consent itself can be challenging. Guests might feel like they're being surveilled because they're not aware of the devices. Hosts might be so used to the devices and forget to inform the guests. Even when guests notice the device, they might find it too awkward to talk about data collection. Emerging research and technologies focus on making people aware or informed of the presence of smart devices, such as adding visual cue, LED lights, making device broadcast their existence with beeping sound or voice messages. AR can also be beneficial as guests can now scan the room with the app and find devices being highlighted or framed. But all of these facets have the goal of informing, and like I said before, there are additional facets of consent that we should consider. We need to do consent better. As the comic I showed you earlier illustrated, we have room to improve in these more traditional consent contexts as well. Unlike data collection, consent has been gaining awareness, but we are really behind on doing adequate consent in smart homes. The current landscape and challenges inspire these questions. Should we broaden our consent efforts beside informed? Do we need multifaceted consent model? If so, are these consent facets all equally important? If we do establish the need of multifaceted consent, how can we design to support multifaceted consent communication? As future proposals will be tied to a base consent model, in this study, we focus on understanding do we need a multifaceted consent model. If facets other than informed do not stand out, we probably don't need a multifaceted consent model. But we do find out that other facets have similar, if not more, effects than we have a case for caring for more than informed consent. To understand the effects of consent, we conduct an online survey with 360 participants. The study consists of two components. We started by asking them to react to sets of vignettes. To avoid introducing biases, we avoid using terms like consent, informed, and freely given in this section of the survey, and instead explain the situation more indirectly. We then ask direct questions in which we refer specifically to ideas and terms from consent literature and laws. In this talk, I would first describe some response from the direct question first and two key findings from the vignette results. Many participants had experiences where these consent facets were absent. More than four out of five participants told us that they had experienced a situation in which at least one of the facets were absent. Informed facets has been the most common facet that is absent. Almost half of participants experience not being informed of smart devices at least once. 
This figure likely represents a lower bound because if someone never found out there is a device, they would not have been able to tell us that they weren't informed in that situation. It also seems likely that participants would not be in the habit of reflecting on whether or not they feel pressured or enthusiastic around smart devices. Participants consent experiences motivates our study as secure and consent experiences indicate that the lack of consent is indeed prevalent. In the vignette portion of the study, participants read vignette like this one. This story is about Vincent and Lewis. Vincent is a delivery driver. He has been delivering packages in the same residential area for a little over a year, including Lewis' house. Vincent normally works 7 to 9 hours per day. He does not know anyone personally from the neighborhoods where he works. Many of the houses are equipped with smart doorbells that record video and audio. There are five other vignettes in addition to this one, featuring different relationship type and device type. Each participant rated how they feel about the devices in the vignette collecting data on a scale from 1 to 7 for three total vignettes. Afterwards, we eroded one consent facets randomly. For example, here, participant read, suppose you found out that Vincent was not informed about data collection of the smart doorbell, where we eroded the informed facets. After reading it, participants provide a second acceptably rating. We use the first rating as baseline, compare the baseline with the revised rating. For this presentation, we provided a simplified version of graph where we combine level 1 to 3 as red and 5 to 7 as blue. Baseline rating have higher acceptability levels. As you can see, the participants find it less acceptable after than before. If we zoom into the breakdown, we can see the lack of freely given has the biggest acceptability rate change, which means that when participants learn the character feel pressure to be around data collection, they found it less acceptable. The same pattern also emerged in our multi-level linear regression models. Freely given, informed, and enthusiastic are three significant factors among the facets. This corresponds to the fact that freely given, informed, and enthusiastic are the three facets that has the biggest acceptability rate change. Besides consent facets, we also found that contacts affect the changes of acceptability ratings. Across all vignettes, average acceptability level drops. However, the change rate can be dependent on the scenarios. Here are two scenarios. The first one is about a couple install a motion sensor in the living room. The second one is a person's security camera captures their neighbor's yard. Their baseline ratings share similar distribution. However, the revised rating distribution differ. In participants' free response answers, we found that participants factor in relationship, device, data type, and location when deciding the acceptability ratings. For example, for the newlywed scenarios, some participants found it acceptable because the motion data is not sensitive. However, others found that in an intimate relationship such as marriage, having sensors feels like an unacceptable breach of privacy. For the security camera recording neighbor's yard, some participants found it acceptable because the yard is outdoor. The camera is merely recording everything that people can already see. On the other hand, we have participants found it unacceptable since the yard is still part of the neighbor's house and people should feel at ease in their own house. Smart home scenarios include different dynamics and various stakeholders. In our direct question section, we ask participants to rate how responsible each stakeholders are. Owners are considered to be the most responsible. Over two-thirds of participants found owners to be very responsible. There is no consensus over manufacturer's responsibility level. Some find manufacturers responsible because manufacturer design and have control over the feature they offer, while others stated that manufacturer cannot control how their products will be used eventually. Most participants agree that incidental users, such as guests and delivery drivers, should not be responsible for getting consent. In the free response section, several participants noted that policymaker or lawmaker should also be responsible for pushing relevant regulations. Based on participants' reasoning for data collection responsibility attribution, we provide facet specific implication for stakeholders. Policymakers should provide more legal basis for data deletion, as mandates and hard laws have the most direct effect. Manufacturers should have features that make it easier for the owner to inform the guests. Manufacturers should also support data deletion channel that is easy for both guests and owner. Device owners should normalize discussion about data collection and accommodate data collection requests to avoid guests experiencing social pressure. 
Researchers should further study what are the relationship between different facets and how can we facilitate different consent facets and overall consent communication culture. I will be wrapping up my talk here, but there is more in our paper. As I mentioned before, for the data I showed, I left a more granulated acceptability rating. We also present the importance level rating of different consent facets when participants were asked directly. To sum up, in our study, we found that yes, consent matters. Participants found it more unacceptable when consent facets were eroded. And consent is contextual. Participants react differently to different scenarios. Most importantly, there are more to consent. Moving forward, we should expand our efforts to more than informed.